Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about accessing memory addresses in C. Now, in the C programming language, a lot of times we're going to want to store different information, right? And there's a bunch of different ways that we can store information. We can use things like variables, we could use arrays, we could use structs. Uh, but the basic point is that whenever we're using C, we're going to want to keep track of and maintain a bunch of different pieces of information. And one of the easiest ways to do that is by creating variables. So down here, you'll notice that I have a bunch of variables. I have this uh, integer called age, and it just has the value of 30. We have this double GPA 3.4, and we have this character grade, and it has the value of the A character. I have a bunch of different variables in my program, and it allows me to keep track of data really easily, and I can use these to you know, maintain, and I can even modify these uh, different informations. Variables are great. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how these work in the actual physical memory of our computer. So whenever I create a variable, for example, when I create a variable called age and I give it a value of 30, this value 30 actually gets stored on our computer. So all computers have uh, memory. So a lot of times you'll hear people refer to this as RAM. It's called random access memory. And basically RAM is the memory that your computer is gonna use when it's running programs. So for example, if I was to run this C program, my computer would use RAM, it would use that memory in order to store and keep track of all this different information. Right, so when I create a variable like int age, C is actually gonna store this value 30 at a specific memory location. So it's gonna take that value 30 and it's gonna store it somewhere in RAM, right? When I create this double called GPA, C is gonna take this value 3.4 and it's gonna store it inside of the physical memory on our computer. When I create this grade, C is gonna store this character and the physical memory in our computer. Now, here's the thing. When I create these variables, I give them descriptive names, right? So I gave this a descriptive name, age, so I know what's stored inside of it, right? And when I want to access this value, I can just refer to the name, right? I can just refer to age. I could modify it. I could um, print it out. I could do something else to it, right? I can do whatever I want with it. And the way that I can access this variable, in other words, the way that I can access the value 30 is just by referring to the name of the variable. Same goes down here. If I wanted to access the grade, right? If I wanted to access this capital A, I could just refer to the name of the variable. But again, here's the thing. All of this information is stored in our physical memory somewhere. And so whenever C needs to access that information, whenever our computer needs to access this value 30 or this value 3.4, it's actually going to refer to a specific memory address, right? So when I want to access this variable age, I can just type out age and then I can use this variable. But when C wants to refer to this value, it's not actually using age. It's going to use the memory address where this value is stored inside of our physical memory. So all of these values are stored inside of a physical address in our memory. So all of these values have an address where they're stored in memory. And when C needs to access them, it can use that address. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can access that address, how we can uh, print out the address onto the screen. And basically just wanted to give you guys an introduction into what memory addresses were. So down here, I'm gonna say print F and I'm gonna show you guys how I can actually print out the physical memory address where each one of these values is stored on our computer. So down here, if I want to print out a memory address, I need to use a percent sign and a P. So normally if I was just going to print out like a number, I could say like percent D or I could say percent C for a character. When we want to print out a physical memory address, we're going to say percent P. And this actually stands for pointer. And we're not going to talk about pointers in this tutorial. We're just going to talk about memory addresses, but just know that you need to say percent P. And now I'm gonna type out the name of the variable whose memory I want to access. So I'm gonna access the memory address of age. And before the variable, I'm just gonna say ampersand. So I'm gonna make an ampersand age and I'm gonna say percent %p. And now we should be able to print out the memory address where the variable age is stored. In other words, we can print out the memory address where this value 30 is stored. So let's go ahead and run our program. And you'll see over here, we're getting this number. So I'm getting this number 0060FF00. 
So this would be like a hexadecimal number. I guess it's not technically a number. It's like, I think it's hexadecimals. But basically this is the physical memory address where the value of 30 is stored. In other words, it's the place where C stored the value inside of this age variable. I could do the same thing for these other variables. So actually, why don't I format this a little bit? I'm gonna say here age, and then I'm gonna make a new line, and we're just gonna say GPA. And again, I'm gonna print out another one of these addresses, and we'll do one for grade, and we'll print out the address. So now I can just come over here and I can sort of modify this a little bit. So I can just say GPA and grade. And you'll notice for each of these, I'm using this ampersand before I type out the name of the variable. So now when we run our program, we should get a nice little list of all of these uh, variables and their corresponding addresses. So you'll see over here, we have age and it's stored at memory address 0060FFOC. GPA is stored at this memory address and grade is stored at this memory address. So if you were to like go into our computer or go into my computer and go to memory address 0060FF0C, that's actually gonna store the value of 30. It's gonna store the value that's inside of that age variable. If you were to go to this memory address, you would see the value inside of GPA. If you were going to this memory address, you would see the letter, which was a capital A. So basically all of these variables are stored at different memory addresses. When I wanna access the information in the variable, I can just refer to the variable's name. So I could say a age, or I could say GPA. But when C wants to access the information in the variable, it has to use these addresses. So C would use this address, C would use this address, and this address. I can just use the variable names, and that's why C is awesome, because it allows us to do stuff like that. But when C and when our computer wants to access these values, it has to use these memory addresses. And so that's why these are useful. And when we're programming in C, it can actually be pretty useful to be able to know the addresses, like the actual physical addresses, of these certain variables in memory. So a lot of times in C, when we wanna work with these variables, we can just refer to them by name and we can do all sorts of stuff with them. We can access them, we can modify them. But in other circumstances, we're not just gonna to wanna to be able to access the value, we're also gonna to wanna to be able to access their physical memory address. In other words, we're gonna to wanna to be able to know like what that address is and we can use that for a bunch of stuff. And in future tutorials, I'm gonna talk about why that can be useful, but for now, I really just wanted to kind of give you guys an overview of what memory addresses are, how we're using them in our program, and how we can print them out. So again, I just use this ampersand, and then I type the name of the variable, and I use this percent %p to print it out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.